Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discuss- to the Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I was made for speed, but this chair was made for sitting. Oh, that's cool. Guess who won? The chair? Pretty much. Yep. Awesome. And also joining us today is Totera. I was not made for speed. However, Pokemon have a good ability of hiding in tall grass. Mm, sneaky, sneaky. So, anywho, uh, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 1, Episode 9 of Pony Life. In this episode, there's a two-parter, by the way, uh, in, in the Fast and the Furious, Twilight and Rainbow Dash gets over competitive as the ponies build derby car and enter their pets in a thrilling race. And in Disappearing Act, Rarity performs a fabulous new magic act for the Kirima Crusaders, but her disappearing spell works a little too well. So anywho, let's get into first impressions. Silver, what do you think of uh, the Fast and the Furious? To be honest, it didn't leave that big an impression. Mostly just wondering, how is Twilight getting involved in this? I mean, I know Pony Life is its own thing. It shouldn't compare it to Friendship is Magic, but Twilight is usually more the the organizer, planner, and uh, lecturer. This whole competitive streak in her seems very foreign. I mean, it's not that foreign because she does have a competitive streak with his with her, with her brother. But yeah, with Rainbow Dash here, yeah, I don't know. Usually, she's the one trying to counsel Rainbow Dash to calm down. And it also is something when the uh, when the pets are better, uh, they're teaching more than the uh, owners. But it's short, that too, just boom, boom, done. I know it was. But at this point, I don't really, uh, yeah. By this point, I already give up on how short and long it is. Uh, it's like, oh, it's short, so that's good. I, I don't really need to focus that much. Or, oh, no, I forgot. I, I can just pop it back in. <laughs> Sorry, I watched it five minutes before we started. I know. <laughs> oh, God. But anywho, uh, Tara, what about you? Well, I'm pretty sure we're going to say this all the time. Yes, it is very short. I feel like they cut to the story very quickly and then everything just it, I, I find that it's how do I say this it's like one of those sonic shorts where they teach you a lesson it's like yeah there's a quick lesson on you know competition and then that's it it's done <laughs> wow that's oh that's about a minute <laughs> like you're comparing okay that's mm. all righty then uh, and as for me uh, wow um, the Fast and the Furious it's one of those episodes where I'm thinking to myself, wait, why are we rehashing this storyline again? And why is Twilight? I mean, this makes no sense. Why are... You know why I, I don't care anymore. Uh, let's just watch. Oh, okay, this is fascinating. Oh, cool. All right, yay. Uh, but anywho, if you have not watched this episode yet, uh, pause your and go do so. So, welcome back. Uh, we still have another one, but I'm just going to put that on this back burner until we do this. And let's see if I need to ask you guys for a opinion when we do this, because I feel like this is going to be really short. I don't know. It seems to already broke uh, broken your spirit, man. Oh, man. We'll see. We'll see. So, anywho, uh, we start off the episode with... Rainbow Dash and Twilight hanging out in Sugar Cube Corner, being hungry and complaining about who's the hungriest. Uh, also joining them is their pets, Tank and Aurelicious. So, Twilight and Rainbow Dash compare who's hungrier and whatnot, and Pinkie Pie comes to the rescue with big goods. Yay! Um, Pinkie Pie tells them to savor it, enjoy, uh, and whatnot. But they just gobble it down in bites, comparing who is the most hungriest and who is the fastest and whatnot. And they were about to get into a fisticuffs, but Fluttershy comes in and says that, Yo, girls, 
there's going to be a derby with the pets being involved and whatnot. So why don't you go join in and stuff? It'll be fun. So uh, it seems that <clears throat> the derby is kind of a small derby because it just involves the main six. Pinkie Pie explains the rules and whatnot. Uh, I'm just going to streamline the rules really fast. Uh, you build your derby cart. No magic involved. But you can use manually. Uh, you can use labor. Yay. Go ahead. Go, 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 go. And winner gets cupcakes. Mountains of cupcakes. So they do so. And we get to see the girls. Well, build their cart. Um, Fluttershy builds her cart. And use Angel Bunny as a jack. I approve. We see Applejack building her cart. And we know us helping. And we know us is good girl. She's so cute. And Rarity has two manly men to build her cart. Yay. There's nothing against the rule in asking others for help. Twilight has a V8 engine in her cart. And Rainbow Dash has rockets strapped onto tank. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I think this is a perfect time to pause. What am I even watching, <laughs> Silver? Well, you're watching them giddy up as derby racers. Giddy up, derby racers. But unfortunately, there is no cheerleader this time around. In fact, there's nobody. Seems it's kind of funny that Pony Life features so little of other ponies, which was part of the fun of uh, French Miss Magic. You know, just seeing who's doing stuff in the background, who's walking around, handling stuff. Well, no such luck. Now, Ponyville is a desolate, isolated land without even an audience. The, truly, there's probably been some sort of apocalypse and Twilight and Friends are just trying to keep up the pretense of life as normal. Even as just to the right of screen, there's a charred mountain of skeletons. Pony skeletons. Wow, that's hell, grim. Hell, Pelotons. Yes, I'm trying to spice this thing up as best I can. How, how am I doing? Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, you're about a 9. Ah, oh, thank you. So, I mean, let, but let's be honest. Ponies and, and uh, basically pine car derbies have not really gotten along in the past. It is kind of funny to see. I guess the funniest joke is when you see all these disparate backgrounds and then you realize it's all part of the same building. But the art kind of bothers me when we see when we see how they interact with the environments and how really limited it is. Also, I will say with Applejack and Winona, you can make a dog fetch, but making them let go is a whole other topic. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing speaking from experience. Very much so. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Tara, what about you? Oh, well, I I don't really understand the whole concept between Twilight and Rainbow being competitive. I mean, if it was uh, Applejack and Rainbow, it makes more sense. But Twilight, like, yeah, she is competitive, but I know she is more competitive when it comes to the, the trivia show or whatever. But, you know, you gotta get a story going. And I do I do like how Angel actually looks more cute instead of a little evil monster. <laughs> is it know, that, that's just me. It's a trick. He may look cute, but he is evil. <laughs> Man, you can't really say much. Just after that, it's just a little montage of them getting the their carts together. And pretty much what Silver said, there's not really a lot of crowds around when there's a huge event happening. Because usually in, back then, in Friendship is Magic, whenever there's an event happening, they have like the whole crowd of Ponyville uh in town but in, it's like in pony life the only people that live in ponyville are the main six unless the plot demands you know oh let's get a new character into the story mm -hmm. at least there's other contestants like this is just a bunch of friends hanging out and doing stuff because the entire town is dead <laughs> yep thanos snapped his fingers <laughs> oh god no that's right it was the it was a great cupcake apocalypse of 18 dickety two. <laughs> oh boys but but anywho, but anywho, um, I'm gonna carry on because we're almost done. <laughs> oh, wow. <sighs> okay. So anyway, as we continue on, we get to the starting line and we see the pets in their carts. I feel like this is just Hasbro trying to create a mobile racing 
card game that didn't really pay off. It feels that way. Or toy line, probably that. But anywho, uh, we start off the starting line and the pets go on their merry ways. Uh, we see that the other's pet are leading a hit while leaving our licious and tank behind and giving their competitive streak. They put the pedal to the metal and somehow made every other creature's or every other pet's cart go boom. And yeah, with that, tank feels bad about doing so. And so does our licious and they make a U-turn to rectify the problem. Uh... Sorry, uh, Rainbow Dash and Twilight uh, learned their lesson about being hyper competitive and uh, Pinkie Pie being Captain Sarcasm here tells the girls that yeah you you guys screwed up real big time yep 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 yep, yep, yep. so with that uh, Twilight and Rainbow Dash tells the the pets to help the pets get to the finishing line and everybody got first place uh, Apple, sorry, Rainbow Dash and Twilight learned their lesson about being hyper competitive not being too hyper competitive and whatnot, and walk into the sunset uh, at the podium we see Applejack looking at the race results and noticing her card got first place and says yes all according to plan and wins the prize and with that, episode ends. Boy, that's fast. Well, I have to, have, I have to give you one correction, Norman. It was Fluttershy who uh, inspected the closing photo and realized she won. Oh, who did I mention before? Uh, Applejack. Sorry, my bad. Like, uh, see, this is one of those cases where I want to say Applejack Rainbow Dash because those two are always at each other's throat. But... <laughs> Has saying Apple Tree saying Rainbow Dash and Twilight just threw me off. Well, either way, Fluttershy won by a nose, which honestly, well, I'll save that for my my thoughts. Uh, you know what? Let, let, let's continue on because we still got another one. So, first impressions for uh, Rarity's Disappearing Act. What do you think, Sil? No, Terra. What do you think? I okay. This was kind of this was kind of interesting. I say kind of because it's like we we've seen this before. Like I'm I'm always gonna compare this to French vs. Mad genre. It's it's just me, but it's like we've seen this before. We already kind of being selfish. Where it's like, oh, we didn't sign up for this. Like you must. I force you to. And then she learns her lesson. But I do like how they include the CMC. Although one little nitpick, I like. I know it's not. You know, it's age you know as you go older your voice changes but if it's oh no just to me apple boom sounds more like sweetie bell in this one but i do like how it turns out like this is i'd like how it uh kind of sets up and then how it goes and i actually like the bit of comedy in here when um we already do it again they're like you're doing it again <laughs> all righty then and silver what do you what about you the biggest thing from this is the introduction of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Though, now that I've now that I've realized that there's been a terrible apocalypse in Ponyville, they're probably just figments of the Main Six's imagination. Yes, I've invented a whole headcanon to describe why Ponyville is so desolate. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just a thing that happened. Rarity makes a big show. Everyone gets thrown into this void world. It's unavoidable. <laughs> this void world looks like the... Uh, the opening of the show. Look at the very first couple frames of the uh, intro. It's the uh, let's see here. Oh yeah. Yep it's it's the void world with just implied shapes. So we literally begin these episodes staring into the void, <laughs> and the void stares back. Oh wow, that's a detail I didn't notice. So there, I will say, Rarity looks adorable in her performance performance outfit but by and large it's just they came they made a big to do and boom all right and as for me this one was okay i mean it's, it's rehashing an old thing about rarity not being um i wouldn't say generous but just being too forceful and whatnot i mean we've seen that before and getting the cmc's I do like their main. It's different. 
and I have to mention that most of the ponies in here do have different mains from Rainbow Dash to Twilight. Yeah, so that's something that I that's something need to be getting used to. So yeah, what whatever it is. But overall, story is okay. So anywho, if you have not watched this episode, yeah, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So we start the episode with well. The main six and the CMCs hanging out in Sugar Cube Corner, and the girls or the CMCs are really excited about hanging out with their sisters. Something to do with badges and whatnot. I don't remember. They're junior trail trotters. Ah, so yeah, you know, that thing, that thing that Fluttershy <laughs> wants so bad. Oh, well, that's gonna disappoint her. Okay, anywho, as they talk, um. Applejack wants to do something with what you call this um, agriculture, but Rarity says no. I want to entertain them with magic. The great and powerful Rarity wants to do magic, and the main six kind of says, "Ugh, no, man! Like we want to do something else." But Rarity forces her way in and strongs arm them into well doing what she wants to do. The girls are pretty excited, so they just sit down and take a look see. And yeah, Rarity is kind of an ego snob because when she said that she has an assistant, it's herself. So yeah, that's not great at all. So uh, while she's trying to perform a magic trick, Rarity calls for volunteers. The CMC screams their lung out to become volunteers, but Rarity picks the main six. So the girls didn't really want to do it, but they're kind of forced into the matter. So Twilight just tells Rarity, are you sure this is a good plan? I mean, those potions can be very, very volatile. Then Rarity assures them that oh, there's not going to be a problem. There's going to be a problem. So Rarity tells the girls to all stand on the table, and she's going to perform a trick where the table will disappear and the girls will be left hanging. Yay! So with that, Rarity performs her trick, and the CMCs are impressed because it works. It really works. And the girls disappear, but the table's still there. What? And I'm gonna pause here. Tara, what do you think? I do like how it's actually set up. I mean, they don't quickly cut right to the chase, but, you know, it's kind of nice how they slowly set it up with the CMC and, you know, the junior, uh, I forget what it was called again. Junior Wukchuk? Yeah, something like that. And I like how Verity, like, well, not Rarity. I like Fluttershy's one comment where when Rarity picks him in the back and Applejack's like, we didn't even vote. And Fluttershy's like, Fluttershy's like, this is why I always sit in the back. And it's like, well, she's not wrong. I, I thought you she know, said You know, if you don't this... want to get voted, you, usually I sit in the back. Uh, I thought she said, this is why I never sit in the back. It is always. She always sits in yeah, the back. Yeah, she always sits in the back. Really? Yeah, she huh. said, this is why I always sit in the back because she doesn't want to get voted. But she gets voted. Oh, okay. Oh, this is why. Okay. <laughs> Other than that, you know, it's the usual shtick. They drink a potion, something happens. <laughs> I don't oh. know. I can't really say much because they cut to the chase so quickly. So it's like, okay, don't really have time to process it. But yeah, we'll go with what you go, you say, Pony Life. Okay. And Silva, what about you? Well. I have to disagree with you on the uh, mains. I, whatever they did to Sweetie Belle's mane is just a crime. Really? It looks like a half-melted <laughs> dough. <laughs> or the pink is so prominent and the violet just doesn't work. She's the one crusader who felt like they did a terrible disservice in terms of design. Oh, the cruelty. Oh, all right. But, okay, uh, forcing her friends to disappear. That's, that's the main conflict. And we get there, boom, boom, boom. It's true, we're all going to share the same critique. Wow, this happened fast. This this is made for an audience in serious need of Ritalin. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not going to even say it. Maybe I'll save it for later. 
Uh, but anywho, uh, is that all, Silva? Mm, I don't know if there's much more I can add to this rather short piece. Other than, again, they're they're trying to entertain their sisters because there's literally no one else in Ponyville. Okay, I'll just... Oh, the tragedy. <laughs> I'll wrap it up. Oh, the shame. <laughs> so, anywho, as we cut to the other girls, they are in the void, like Silva mentioned, the intro song. And Pinky just says, yo, first time here? <laughs> so, it seems that Pinkie Pie has been there a lot. So, okay. Uh, Rarity panics and the CMC tries to help her and yeah um, the CMCs find a book about well magic and how to bring them back and uh, Rarity looks through the book and finds the solution yay uh, the reason why the girls disappeared is because they didn't really want to be involved and whatnot and the way to you know what? The the conclusion to get them back is dumb. Rarity drinks potion and gets herself into the void. Uh, meeting up with the other girls, she says she's sorry and the, learns her lesson about not doing that anymore. Yeah. Uh, so we cut off into the void. I, I'm just seeing here that Pinky and Applejack are playing tic-tac-toe. And I'm guessing Applejack is an ex? Think? Oh, did she have a breakup? No, no. A cross, yes. Let's go. <laughs> Boys, wait, who, um, Rarity pops in saying that she's sorry and won't do it again. But she keeps doing it again and gets scolded by the group. And uh, they hug it out. And Pinky is the one that brings them back to reality. Pinky has magics. Oh, boys. So, anywho, uh, once they get back to reality, they squash the p, they, <laughs> they squash the CMCs, and they have, they all have a good laugh, and episode ends. So, Silver, what do you think? And final thoughts? Well, I mean, the Crusaders got to help. I mean, that's always welcome. It seems to be the same rhythm in these episodes. One of the main six gets an idea, takes it way too far. Ends up having to apologize to the group, group hug, problem solved, the end. And because they're shorter, we really don't get a lot of build-up, which works for and against it. For in that we don't get, we don't have to sit through uh, 15 minutes of the character just not getting it, and while the audience is practically screaming, Just be nice! Ah! But at the same time, it's there and done so fast you feel like you haven't really been on any sort of journey with the characters. It might have been interesting to see how the other ponies handled the void for longer than a minute. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, this one here, ugh, like, uh, so short, so short. Uh, I'll save my piece if I can remember. Uh, is that all, Silva? Yeah, that about does it. All right. Tara, what about you? Well, like I said, it's pretty decent, not something you wouldn't give a second watch at. And, you know, it's like, you don't really have much time to build up for anything. Like, they just cut to everything so quickly. It's like, oh, this happened. And then this quickly happens. Like, oh, okay, that happened pretty fast. And then something else happened, and it happened so fast again. It's like, get, slow down, but they can't slow down. And then, like, she, she already, she, I, I don't know, I kind of see that she didn't learn her lesson, because, how do I say it? Like, when she's trying to figure out how to get him back, all of a sudden, hey, book of plot conveniences. It's like, oh, okay, so they just randomly have a book, and then she reads the book on, and then she, that's when she learns how to get him back. Not really. <laughs> Cle- clearly, Torterra, you've never seen the Junior Woodchuck Guidebook. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh... <laughs> I, I think Silver gets where I'm going with that. <laughs> I mean, let's just be be clear. The uh, Junior Woodchuck Guidebook is the ultimate deus ex. Yes, totally. I totally agree with that statement there. But anywho, uh, as for me, this episode is... It's kind of entertaining to see Rarity go back to her old ways. But at the same time, too, it feels like the crew who's doing Pony Life is just rehashing on all ideas. Uh, I, I know Silver mentioned that never compare uh, sorry, don't compare uh, Friendship is Magic to Pony Life because they're two different entities but it's hard not to when you get to when you already 
are with the girls for almost a decade now. And just looking at them digress to just being some joke is kind of depressing in a way. But with the fast-paced action of the show, it kind of makes you not really pay attention. My first watch for this episode, I was playing a game. I was playing Puzzle Quest on Steam while watching that. And I didn't really pay attention at all until I thought to myself, wait, what did I watch? What did I miss? I, I need to rewatch it. And on the second rewatch, I still didn't get what I was watching. And ew, it's one of those shows that is so fast, so short, that it kind of don't really hold your attention. It's just there as background noise for kids to not really pay attention. It's... Ugh, it sucks. That's all I have to say. But for the episode itself, it was okay. Oh, boys. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode review? Well, we've just watched the Crusaders uh, in action. Now we're going to switch gears and see the Student Six once again as we go to IDW Comics in issue 84 of Friendship is Magic. Yay, that's going to be great. Woohoo, I can't wait. So, anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me in lots of places. You can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can support my comics and videos through Patreon and Ko-fi under Silver Quill. Uh, search on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill. I shall appear. You can catch me on art streams on Fridays, as well as videos coming out, and on. The week of new comics on a Wednesday. You can find me on the Quest Three a Daily. Awesome! All of those places are great. Go subscribe. Go follow. Go stock. <laughs> Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera One Three Two Four, or they could just do a Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome! Simple enough to follow. Just follow Tortera One Three Two Four. Also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, stay to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PanimaLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan and also myself like thank you so much guys you are great so anyway I have been Norman Sanzo I am the Silver Quill and I am the Torterra we'll guys catch you with another fun episode of the MBS show see ya adios bye bye so yeah that, that, that episode was fast <laughs> it lives up to its uh, episode title The Fast and the Furious <laughs> Well, are we all furries? I don't know. Are we going to seriously debate that? I mean, bronies are a subsection of the furry fandom. No? Yes? Oh, shock and awe. Ah. Ah. Wow, Terra was in pain. Yeah, I managed to break for Terra. Yay me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's still early, so there's much more to break. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>